Next up, we have Michael Spiegel. So, Michael, um, what is your favorite breed of domestic cat? Uh, cat. I, <laughs> what? I'm a dog person. All right. Good answer. <laughs> If yeah. you want to get in the center stage or behind the podium, wherever you like, or good. behind the curtain, whatever you want. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> ready? Yeah, ready to go. Hey, I'm Michael. I've written several GitHub integrations, and I want to talk about some of the mistakes I made so you can learn from them and you don't have to make them. So a whirlwind tour of the different types of integrations you can write with GitHub. The two most common ones are GitHub apps and OAuth apps. Brain dead simple, just use GitHub apps. The newer style, a GitHub app acts on its own behalf. It can make requests on, on, as a bot, or it can make requests on behalf of your users, and I'll show you examples of both. Some of the lesser known ones, so GitHub Actions is in public beta. It's essentially Docker and shell scripts. Your cloud provider gives you a lot of this functionality. I don't use it, but you can take a look at it. The other one is to take a look at our uh, browser side, browser extensions. Um, I prefer to have all my integration server side instead of client side. Client side, you have to make sure that it's installed on each of your teammates, but they're popular, so you can take a look at them. Now, um, the one piece of advice is definitely to create a machine account or a bot account. So even the GitHub apps, there are certain actions that a GitHub app cannot perform, but a GitHub user as a bot can make them. So this is really key. Um, so the GitHub app is really, the API is really powerful, but it's big, it's evolved over time, and let's learn from some of its mistakes. I don't mean to disparage, but let's just learn from it. So the first thing is that if you're returning values, you wanna be consistent. The API mostly returns lowercase, in a few places, it doesn't. So <laughs> just remember if you're using it to call to lower if it's case insensitive, and please don't do this on your own APIs. Please be consistent. The third thing is, some, in certain APIs, a missing value from an empty value from the null value all do different things. Please don't write your APIs this way, or if you do, document it. It's documented in prose, but not with examples. And please dog food your APIs. So this is, for example, the button that's update branch in the UI is not available in the API, and I work around it. Um, but it's a pain in the butt. So don't do this. Please make everything available. Some actions don't occur immediately, and the documentation doesn't tell you, especially like creation, repository creation, pull request creation. It's loads of fun when you're doing integration testing, and you're like, okay, gotta add random sleep or retry. <laughs> and GraphQL to, puzzles me. It's not purely graph. There's only specific uh, entities that you can enter and specific relationships you can traverse. And the other thing is, it's not a general purpose query language. I end up having to do filters and transformations on my side. So I, I don't get the power of it. To be honest, if I had infinite time and money and the ear of powerful people, I, I would do it differently. I would just publish um, you can see a, a read-only SQL interface, publish the data model since I can confer, infer the data model from the GraphQL anyway, and then provide a smaller REST API for mutations. But practically speaking, use the GraphQL API because it's more powerful for GitHub. But I, I wouldn't do it this way. Always Be Closing is a GitHub service that I wrote. It's in the GitHub Marketplace. It's free, it's public beta. Please check it out and give me feedback. I'd love to hear your uh, opinions. It has a number of features. I'm gonna talk about the features and also how I implemented them. So the pull request um, process in GitHub is like four button clicks. Just type approve or request changes and the Always Be Closing app will make a user to service request and create that pull request review. I think it's really handy and convenient. Um, status checks, failing ones, don't get notifications by default in GitHub. The bot will post a comment, and comments in GitHub on a pull request triggers a notification. So if your test fails, it'll tell you immediately, which I think is really cool. Um, this branch update is a great feature. If there's been commits made to the base branch, the bot will merge them into the compare branch, as long as there's no uh, conflicts. Another related feature is syncing forks. So that's syncing a fork with its upstream. 
Now, webhooks don't give me the push events, but webhooks are triggered by pull request commits, but there's a whole bunch of constraints with pull requests. So how do I shoehorn this fork syncing feature into the pull request? It's a little tricky. Okay, the, tr the cheat is make a dummy branch, move that dummy branch backwards, create a pull request just for that dummy branch, and then you get the webhooks, and then you can sync your forks. And never close a book. Yeah, I know, it's great, right? So uh, please check out the app. Here are my links, and thank you for listening.